you're looking at the ingredients from a recipe I bought from more beer. I'm going to be brewing this recipe, but I'm going to be adding my own twist by adding some coffee. And hopefully, if everything goes well, this will be one incredible beer. Beersmith 3 was released, and I'm going to go ahead and give that another shot. I didn't have the best luck with the other Beersmiths. You can pause it and take a look at those quantities. So here I have my three gallons of water that I'm getting up to about 190 degrees. I want to mash in at 158 to pull the sweetness out of these grains. I've been focusing on getting my water chemistry just right in the last couple of brews. This time I'm using Beersmith's water profile tool, and you can pause it and take a look at the additions that I'm making, but hopefully this will get my water chemistry just right. I use a one pump setup, so I'm gonna go ahead and pump my water over to my mash tun so we can go ahead and get this brew started. So I'm going to go ahead and mash in at 175 degrees and hopefully it will come in right about 158 or so uh, once I have all the grains in and mixed up. I've picked up the speed in adding my grains a little bit because I haven't found dough balls to be as big an issue as I originally thought they would be. I'm installing the sparge device and I'm not using it for the sparge yet, I'm using it to recycle as the mash goes on. I'm finally getting this equipment down. You can see I was within two degrees of exactly where I wanted to be. Now after I've mashed in, I always heat up my water to clean everything so I can mix it with my PBW and also so I'll have hot water on hand if I need to add any to the mash. So I'm gonna unhook my hose from my sparge device and connect it to my HLT. Now I know this isn't standard, but I need to heat up six gallons of water and my existing HLT, which is the middle pot, was my very first kettle that I bought and it doesn't hold six gallons. So after I sparge, then I'll dump the first wort into the actual boil kettle, which is on the right, and I'll be good to go. Now a tip I've learned along the journey is to clean as you go as best that you can, especially with PBW because it needs to have you know warm water. So clean as you go and it makes the end of the day a lot better. So I sparged for about 50 minutes. Now it's time to go ahead and transfer the sparge over to the boil kettle, which I dumped the first runnings into just a few minutes ago. Now let's go ahead and get this boil going. So a big thing I've learned along the way is to ease into the boil as slow as possible. Once you get up to about 210 degrees, you really wanna be on the flame control to make sure you can turn it down or up as needed to really just kind of ease into that boil. If you ever get a boil over, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So after I've eased into the boil, then I'm gonna add a few hops at a time in small doses until I get the, you know, the whole hop addition in because that hop break can also cause a nasty boil over.
So this is a 60 minute boil. 45 minutes into the boil, I'm gonna go ahead and put my wort chiller and get it sterilized. And I'm gonna put my Wurflock tablet in and that's gonna help make sure we have a clear beer. I'm gonna put some corn sugar in. This is not on the recipe, but I'm just trying to raise my alcohol percent. And lactose, lactose is, you know, it's very important when you're doing a milk stout or a sweet stout like this. One pound of lactose going in, it's gonna make it delicious. So here's my yeast starter. It's a one liter yeast starter that I did yesterday. Just started getting into yeast starters. I understand they're a little more important for bigger or higher gravity beers. And with that extra sugar I put in, I'm hoping it gets my gravity up a little higher. So hopefully this yeast starter will help out. So the boil's over and it's time to go ahead and transfer the wort over to the fermenter. Now I'm gonna use my air cylinder to add oxygen to the wort and that's gonna get the wort really ready for that yeast. I run the oxygen for about 30 seconds and that seems to be plenty. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dump my yeast starter in and get this fermenter in the fridge. Now after three days, I'm gonna brew six cups of my favorite coffee and I'm gonna dump it into the top, being careful not to allow any more oxygen than I have to into the fermenter. This should, should hopefully give the beer an incredible coffee taste and flavor if I can do it without contaminating it. I'm going to uh, ferment the beer at 63 degrees for the first four days, then I'm gonna raise it to 65. So you can see my starting gravity came out at 1062, and I'm pretty happy with that. Stay tuned for an upcoming Homebrew Wednesday for the results.